Hey everyone, Robot here, and this video will cover how to counter stealth killers in DBD in 2023. By stealth I mean killers whose power allow them to hide their terror radius and red stain at will, without the use of add-ons or perks. We'll cover Wraith, Ghostface, Pig, and Sadako. First, let's cover general tips that apply to all stealth killers. At the start of a match, if you sense the map is unusually quiet, it could be an indication you're versing a stealth killer. Always be looking around you when you move around the map or are working on a gen so you don't get caught by surprise when the killer comes around. You don't want to give killers an easy grab of a gen and allow them to get easy pressure on the team. When working on a gen, pick a spot that doesn't allow the killer to body block you, preventing you from running away. When you're trapped, the killer will be able to get an easy hit on you. Instead, pick a spot to repair the gen that allows you to look around and always have an exit plan so you can run away as soon as you see the killer. Now let's talk about specific killers. First, we'll cover the Wraith. This is a killer whose terror radius is 32 meters when uncloaked and is undetectable when cloaked meaning the terror radius is muted and the red stain hidden. When uncloaked, Wraith moves at 4.6 meters per second, which is 15% faster than survivors. Survivors move at 4.0 meters per second. While cloaked, base kit, meaning without the use of add-ons or perks, Wraith moves at 6 meters per second, which is 50% faster than survivors. Now let's talk about counters. Number one, listen for sound cues. Wraith excels at catching survivors by surprise. However, while cloaked, Wraith makes a distinct growling sound. You'll hear this when he's very close and that's an indication to start running away if you're sitting on a gen or doing something else around the map. But since he has to be uncloaked in order to be able to hit you and the action of uncloaking takes a bit of time, you may still be able to get away unscathed if you react fast enough. The other sound cue is, of course, his wailing bell, which he rings when he's about to cloak or uncloak. Taking the same scenario as before, if you're sitting on a gen or maybe healing, as soon as you hear the bell, go to your pre-planned escape route. This segues into the next tip, number two. Sitting on a gen or just being out in the open, there's not much you can do if Wraith catches you by surprise. But while healing yourself or healing others, do it in a safe spot, meaning close to a window you can vault or pallet you can throw to try to avoid getting hit. This might buy you a bit of time to reach another area you can loop better. Oh, and something else I want to mention about the Wailing Bell. Wraith has an add-on called Coxcomb Clapper that completely silences his bell, meaning you won't hear his bell at all before he cloaks or uncloaks. you only hear the whooshing sound that follows the cloak or uncloak action. If the Wraith you're versing has this add-on, surprise attacks are very hard to avoid but it's good to learn to recognize when he's using this atom. Number three, many Wraith players choose builds that speed up the time it takes them to vault windows or break pallets while cloaked. However, you can block Wraith from breaking pallets or vaulting windows while cloaked by continuously vaulting them yourself. This will make Wraith have to uncloak to get you to stop blocking the pallet or vault. Since the uncloak action takes a bit of time to complete, this will allow you to make a run for it and get a bit of distance to continue the chase. Our next killer is the Ghostface. This is a killer whose terror radius is 32 meters, but is undetectable when he uses his power called Night Shroud, meaning the terror radius is muted and the red stain hidden. When in Night Shroud, he can stalk survivors. A fully stalked survivor becomes exposed, meaning Ghostface can put them in the dying state with just one hit, even if the survivor is fully healthy. Ghostface can see the stock meter in his HUD for each individual survivor. Ghostface has the ability to crouch and he can move around the map crouched as well. But he does this at 3.8 meters per second which is 5% slower than survivors. Standing, he moves 15% faster than survivors at 4.6 meters per second. Now let's talk about counters. Number 1. Listen for sound cues. His clothes make some noise while in Night Shroud. You'll hear this when he's very close, and that's your cue to look around to see if you can spot him, and this takes us to tip number two. Survivors can get Ghostface out of his Night Shroud power by looking directly at him for long enough, and as long as they're within 32 meters. This action is called revealing. However, he can stalk survivors from 40 meters away, so if you're staring at him from afar, he's right on the center of your screen and you cannot reveal him, 
you're probably too far and he's probably filling up your stock meter to expose you. Revealing him takes one and a half seconds and when you're actually revealing him, you'll hear the following sound cue. And you'll hear another sound cue when he's fully revealed. If a survivor can see enough of his body for one and a half seconds, Night Shroud automatically deactivates. It's harder for survivors to reveal him while he's leaning or crouching, and until survivors reveal him fully, Ghostface can continue stalking them, so whenever you can, try to keep structures between you and Ghostface, and position your camera to see him right on the center of your screen to reveal him. Keep in mind that if Ghostface manages to expose you, you cannot reveal him until your exposed status effect runs out. Other survivors, however, can reveal him for you. Other ways to get Ghostface out of his Night Shroud power are stunning him or making him miss an attack. Number 3. Whenever you reveal Ghostface, your location is revealed to him for 2 seconds by Killer Instinct. Keep this in mind because there may be times when you want to be stealthy and hide from Ghostface, so if you happen to reveal him by accident, he'll know exactly where you are. If you're trying to stay hidden, don't look at him directly. Next we have the pig. This is a killer whose terror radius is 32 meters but is undetectable when she crouches. Similar to Ghostface, the pig moves slower at a speed of 3.6 meters per second which is 10% slower than survivors. While crouched, she hides her terror radius and her red stain. While standing, she moves at 4.6 meters per second which is 15% faster than survivors. While crouched, she has the ability to activate a special attack called Ambush Dash. When active for 2 seconds, she charges at a speed of 6.9 meters per second which is 7 22.6% faster than survivors, and if she makes contact with you while she is in her ambush dash, she will take one health state. The pig also has a certain number of reverse bird traps that she can put on survivors while they're in the dying state. The traps become active after a generator is repaired. Once active, the survivors have a certain amount of time before the trap snaps and kills them. Survivors can attempt to remove the trap at one of the jigsaw boxes located around the map. Survivors can also see the trap's timer around their character's portrait. Now let's talk about counters. The pig is completely silent while crouched, but there are two important sound cues that you can listen for to recognize when she's around. The first one is when the pig goes from crouching to standing, her knife makes a particular sound. And the second sound is when the pig is about to use her special attack, which is a loud growl. When you hear either of those two sounds, she's near, so try to run away. An experienced pick player may try to use their ambush attack while they block a pallet in tiles that have rocks or similar structures next to them. At that point it becomes a guessing situation whether the pig will come at you from the left or the right hand side. Since it takes a moment for the ambush to charge up, you could use this time to leave that tile and gain some distance. Try to be unpredictable because sometimes the pig may just pretend like she's charging her ambush dash and will stand up right away and potentially catch you in a bad spot. Number 2. I mentioned this tip in another video so I'll give you the shortened version. Since traps activate after a gen is completed, if you notice a teammate has a trap on them but is not active and you're working on a gen, you could leave that gen repair progress at 99% and not complete it so your teammate's trap doesn't activate and he doesn't have the pressure of needing to get the trap off. Unfortunately, in solo queue, you wouldn't have a way to communicate this strategy, so this works better with friends. One caveat, of course, is that the pig could find the 99% gen and regress it by kicking it or using another regression perk. So, it's risky, but it could be a good strategy. Number 3. Survivors with an active trap cannot leave the trial through an exit gate. If they attempt to do so, their head will... well, let me show you. For this reason, once all the gens are repaired, if you notice a teammate has an active trap, leave as soon as you can if you get a chance to do so. Because though your teammate can't leave through the exit gate, they can leave through the hatch, even with the active trap. I've had matches where my teammates don't leave and I have an active trap with not enough time to get it off, so yeah, this is what happens. I'll give you a bonus tip for pig. You can leave the match with a trap on as long as it isn't active. I've seen people try to take off an inactive trap during endgame collapse because they think their heads will explode if they don't and they try to leave through the exit gate. But rest assured, non-active traps are non-lethal. The next and last killer is Sadako. This is a killer whose terror radius is 24 meters well manifested but is undetectable when she is demanifested. 
which allows her to hide her terror radius and red stain. She does have a subtle lullaby that can be heard from 24 meters away. More on that in a moment. Now let's talk about counters. Number 1. Same as with the other killers, listen for sound cues. While the manifested, Sadako emits a very distinct sound when she's near you. It's very subtle, so you need to pay close attention to distinguish it. And the same as with the other killers, if you hear this sound, that's your cue to start running away. Number 2. While demanifested, Sadako has the ability to either manifest at will or by projecting herself through a TV. When she projects through a TV, she spreads condemned on survivors. One projection is equal to one stack of condemned. Your condemned meter is the circle around your character's portrait in the HUD. You can avoid, however, getting sacks of Condemned by holding a tape. You can retrieve tapes from TVs around the map. Holding a tape while Sadako projects to TVs will prevent her from giving you stacks of Condemned. However, if she hits you while you're holding a tape, you get two stacks of Condemned right off the bat and your tape disappears, meaning you need to get another tape later to continue to keeping you from getting condemned when Sadako projects. In conclusion, hold the tape any chance you get because a good Sadako will constantly project to TVs. And just in case you're wondering what happens when your condemned meter fills up, let's just say it's not good. Number 3. If your condemned meter starts to fill up, you can bring it down by retrieving a tape from a TV and take it to another TV. This does two things. Brings your meter down as mentioned, but also disables the TV where you inserted the tape. A disabled TV prevents Sadako from being able to project to that TV, at least for a few moments. And I'll give you a bonus tip also for Sadako. While the manifested, she can't get stunned with pallets, and she can walk through survivors. This is good to know when you're in chase or if you're trying to take a protection hit for a teammate. I want to thank my good friend Kure Haigur for helping me put together some of these examples and if you'd like to check out his Twitch channel, you can click the link in the description below. If you'd like to be notified when I post the next video in this series, you can subscribe to the channel and if you haven't checked out the other videos I've posted, you can check some of them by clicking on the thumbnails on the left hand side of your screen. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.